Hey Jules Bless Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those of you who are new I know you can benefit. 500 videos people! What? 500 videos? Oh my goodness. It's at least day 500 anyway and I know I've done some days with more than one so it's probably more than one but I don't know how to find how many. I don't even know how to look at my old videos. <laughs> I think they only save 100 at a time. But it's at least 500. So let's just say, wow, Jules Bless Vegan, 500 videos. Whoop, whoop, girl. I know, I'm celebrating myself. And thanks for people who have come by. I mean, yeah, it's still a quiet little channel, an exclusive elite group. But there are over 500 opportunities to say, what is that chick babbling about? <laughs> that would be me. Yay. Anyway, I just wanted to celebrate that because you know what? This is called doing it while going through it, right? And my friend Tani Ra, and I will claim her as a friend. Uh, Tani Ra is a social media phenomenon on every social media platform. If you don't know her, look her up. And I don't know if all her stuff is original to her. I just know when she says it, I was finally ready to hear it. You know how the teacher appears when the student's ready? I could hear everything out of T. Ra's face. And don't be calling her T. Ra. That's a personal nickname <laughs> that I casually use. Um, Tanya Murphy. Uh, Mrs. Murphy. Anyway, uh, yeah, Tanya Ra. You know, she'll say you've got to do it while you go through it. And, and certainly in the 12-step program, it says the only way out is through. And I so get that. So if you saw my yesterday's video, you may know that my precious nephew, Dean, and I call him Deany Bopper. <laughs> He's so cute. I have so many great stories about him. And he's in a coma because of a drug overdose. And what his circumstance was, I don't know. I know he struggled from various forms of mental illness. And I'm not sure what he was thinking when he overdid it. Uh, and whether that was just the umpteenth time where his body just shut down. But it turned out today that we found out he technically had a heart attack. He's only 36. He's like five, I mean, forgive me, six foot two, like 130 pounds. He's a tall, lean kid and a kid to me, right? And uh, the drugs made him have a heart attack and his brain is swelling. So he's still in a coma, though they decided to reduce some of the medications, um, hopefully to help him to function. And everybody's on the case. Like, all my lovely social media families are praying for him, and I know it matters. And I hope that God is just allowing him to rest a moment and, and repackaging him so that when he awakes, he has a fresh hope and a fresh start at all the potential he can be. You know, all of us are called to greatness. We're all called to be saints. We were definitely called to greatness, whatever that looks like, it's per person. And so I just want my precious little Dean to just say, I'm enough, I'm enough. The same thing we've been learning for so long, I'm enough as I am and I have great things to contribute. And that would be the beauty, the beauty of him having a second chance. So continued prayers, please. And I will keep you posted. But that said, I was realizing, you know, I made good choices yesterday. At first, I didn't want to do my rosary. I didn't feel like rebounding. I wasn't going to eat dinner. You know, like the whole thing. And I pushed through and just said, you know, you have to be your best self in this moment. Because things are coming. You know, maybe he, he's going to die and I'm going to have to take days off from school and go up north and be at a funeral. Maybe he's going to live and he's going to need some support from loved ones and family. And I was certainly supporting him before this happened. And I will have to be available for that. But me being my own form of comatose and a food coma or a depression coma or being selfish and only focusing on my isn't going to help anything at all. So I ate properly and I said my rosary and I did my rebounding and I drank my 16 cups and I did all the things that I said I would do. And today I did too. The day's not over, but it's absolutely my intention. And I've got my stuff. When my little monkey mind's talking, what you doing, monkey mind? <laughs> I say, forget you, monkey. But he sure is cute. But I get to pay myself because I was tempted today and I have got my urge jar. And you know, this is the focused video 
that I have on my site right here. So if you haven't seen it, it's a little long, but it is super worth learning about how to properly use an urge jar. And, you know, they're only, they only cost like $4 to make. Uh, the beautiful glass beads, you can get a couple hundred of them for a dollar each at the dollar store. Um, you know, you can get certainly a mason jar. You may already have one, um, but they cost like nothing as well. And it's just to appease your little internal self that is wanting toys, <laughs> whether that is toxic food or whether it's spending money or whether it's acting out and gambling or if it's doing drugs or alcohol, whatever it is, you can appease that inner self by rewarding them with stickers or glass beads and, and just telling them that you're so grateful that they chose to behave in the moment. No fit throwing in the line at the grocery store, right? People, we're all in progress and no one's required to be here. This current society does not expect anyone to go beyond the obvious. But some of us are saying that like the matrix, I'm tired of living in a false existence when I know there's more and a more authentic life to be led. So I'm so glad you guys are here. But that said, I wanted to share a very brief article. You may be familiar. There's an app called The Daily Burn, and it has things fitness, health, style, etc. And this is one of them, which, of course, I will include in the description of this video. And it's five ways to stop stress eating from taking over your brain. So again, just one more tool. You know, I give a bunch of tools. Some may work for you, some may not, and that's okay. But hopefully at some point, something will trigger you and you'll go, wow, I didn't think about that before. I think I'll try for it. So this reads, sometimes it happens after you get an angry email from your boss. Oh God, that's... That is so true for me. It doesn't have to be an angry email, but any conflict at work, I become very small. Or maybe because you recently connected with a new love interest, or now he or she is gone MIA. Whatever the dilemma, cue your hand into a bag of Cheetos or whatever your poison of choice is, or visit to the kitchen for whatever. You know what it is. It's stress eating. It's perfectly human to want to avoid pain and seek relief. Like that's actually a human characteristic. A registered dietitian, uh, Mean Hai Alex of the Mindful Nutrition in Seattle says, stress eating usually happens when we want to disconnect from the moment. It's like changing the channel in our brain to try to change how we feel. She explains, here's why food is such a solve for stress and how to stop the cycle. A salve, a salve. The L is silent and it's a salve like uh, when they put ointment on something, right? This is why you turn to food when you're stressed. It's no surprise if you suddenly feel famished when deadlines or crisis strike. Stress activities your, forgive me, stress activates your adrenal glands to release cortisol, increasing your appetite. Look at that. Activate your adrenal glands to release cortisol and increase your appetite. Guess what? I have the grace of turning off that TV and I'm going to. One moment, please. Okay, you may still hear it, but it's not that first TV. It's a second TV. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, we're blessed with TVs in this house. Anyway, um, so there's a cortisol that increases your appetite. Stress also impedes hunger hormones like ghrelin. And that always reminds me of gremlins, right? And they're equally vicious. That regulate your appetite. If the anxiety is cutting into your sleep, a lack of sleep ramps up your appetite even more. You know, that's interesting. Because you know I get barely any sleep at all. And I don't think everybody needs eight hours. Um, but it doesn't... Well, you know what? I'm not going to proclaim that. I was going to say it doesn't seem to affect my appetite. Like I either am compulsive I'm or, or I'm not, but to be fair, I've never gotten enough sleep to test that theory. <laughs> so I'm going to let that one go. Okay, let's move on. Unfortunately, that anxiety-induced hunger can have long-term consequences for your waistline. In fact, one new study found that women who reported they were stressed burned fewer calories and fat and had a higher insulin response, so that insulin draining in your body, after eating a higher fat meal. The research concluded that these stress-induced changes led women to burn about 100 fewer calories a day. 
a difference that can cause you to pack on, wait for it, 11 pounds a year. Okay, so they ain't playing. Let's go back. <laughs> wow. These stress-induced changes led women to burn about 100 fewer calories per day, a difference that could cause you to pack on 11 pounds a year. When you're under stress, you often feel out of control and overwhelmed, and that can leak into your eating habits. So it's no surprise that you go after junk food like a hungry lion. Rather than keeping up your normally healthy habits, you're worried about the past or the future, not what you're eating in the present. So true. Stress depletes the cognitive resources you need to remain focused and resilient and to practice creative problem solving. That's why getting elbow deep in a pint of mint chip always feels easier than actually coming up with a plan for how to tackle that super tough work project. Duh. <laughs> it's just easier to just zone out in a sugar coma than to worry about the work that needs to be done. Oh my gosh, I so get that. Okay, so when junk food is calling your name, well, it's too bad you don't crave celery sticks and carrots during crazed moments. That would go against biology. Fries, snack mixes, cookies, and ice cream are go-tos because these high-carb, high-fat eats increase the brain's feel-good dopamine response. You know how they say sugar is even more addictive than cocaine because of the dopamine release? So maybe you're well above this. Maybe you don't even do fries and la-la-la -la anymore. But do you totally pack in the um, dates when you're going crazy? Do you eat extra avocado? You know, do you make more ice cream even when it's two degrees outside and you're dying? Um, what is it that you're trying to find? So it says again, you'll hear the siren song of chocolate chips because your noggin has come to expect the rewarding hit of dopamine and knows where to find it. <laughs> Cookies? Like that's what it says. Okay. Not only that, but it's easy for stress snacking to become an ingrained habit. A 2015 study in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism discovered that one reason we eat high sugar foods is because sugar dampens stress-induced cortisol responses. Translation for the simple people. You feel better on a sugar high. Over time, your brain may start to rely on these foods to simmer down. Interesting. Problem is, anyone who's done it and who hasn't knows what it feels like after you eat for emotional reasons. The guilt and frustration hit you like a hangover. Research from Penn State backs up what we've all suspected, that eating bad for you foods can make a grumpy mood even worse. I so get that. Luckily, I've been clean for a while. I'm going to stay with that. Okay, how to stop stress eating. Ready to break free from stress eating and bring back happiness to your eats? Try some of these simple tricks. Next time anxiety strikes. I haven't pre-read these, so I might have to correct myself as we go. Number one, focus on the real issue. We all know food is just a crutch when we're stressed. Stress eating is not the primary problem, but a symptom of unmet needs. Ask yourself, how do I feel? What do I need? to figure out what's really going on under your skin. I've been having something hanging over me because it's been due and I haven't been turning it in. And why haven't I been turning it in? Because I, it's just lack of self-respect. But am I doing it? No, you know, sometimes I have to fake it and pretend I'm doing it for someone else who actually matters because I have trouble believing I matter. It is tragic, but true. And it's haunting me. All right. And then there's uh, hyperlinks in here so that you can read additional articles to support that. So the additional article is how to get good at stress and make it work in your favor. Hello. That has to be an article that I read. How can I make this insecurity work in my favor? Number two, think long term. Take a minute to focus on the future. Whether that means recalling your weight loss goals or how awesome you want to look on vacation next month. Before you give in to stress eating, it can help get you out of the moment so that you make healthier food choices instead of succumbing to the lure of a tasty treat. And again, there's hyperlinks. That's what happened yesterday. I was just going crazy and decided I was going to 
binge my head off over finding out about my nephew, which never would have served me, ever. And then I remembered how good I felt in my pants yesterday. And I was like, do you really want to be uncomfortable again? That's a no. Okay, number three, get mindful. In a study in the Journal of Obesity, women who underwent mindfulness training, and I've done uh, different um, videos on mindfulness, and you might want to put it in there. Learning stress reduction techniques, how to recognize hunger and pay attention to taste, were less apt to stress eat and lost more belly fat compared to a control group. Next time you're feeling taxed, try this exercise. You'll learn to identify your feelings, accept the unpleasant ones, and focus on your breathing so that you can fight the automatic urge to reach for a snack. And again, there's a hyperlink for the exercise. Another related article, Nine Simple Tricks to Eat More Mindfully. Number four, be kind to yourself. I'm going to do a couple of these over these next few days because when something major like this happens, I don't know. There's the smallest intent that my nephew is starting to maybe wake up in some way. They've reduced the medicine and the doctor said there's a little bit. But I know people can die at any time. I know God can pull the plug at any moment. I had this dog and she was getting surgery and her name was Lady. And at noon, they said she was doing great and I could pick her up at 3.30. When I came at 3.30, she was dead. I don't know. Life is fleeting and fragile. That's all we can think of. Okay. Self-compassion can decrease stress eating. Yeah, compassion for yourself. When you're a kind, understanding friend to yourself, it's easier to resist the urge to try to disconnect through stress eating. If you do stress eat, promise that you won't beat yourself up and understand what it happens to everyone sometimes. That can help stop you from eating out of failure and help you make better choices later. Finally, if all else fails, go ahead and indulge. Food is a lovely, comforting thing, says McCreary. So if you're going to do it anyway, she recommends really enjoying it. There's a hyperlink on that. Sit down, let yourself relax, and taste the nice cream. It says ice cream, but you know us. Of course, do so in moderation. Plan on savoring a small brownie rather than a whole batch. Yeah, I can't do that. There's certain foods I can't do that. If there is 12 in a pack, I will count the calories and eat 12. If there is 16 servings in a half gallon, I will have the 16 servings. I'm not a person who, and am I affirming that? I know it from experience. Give me a break. That I can't even trick and say. Like I watch those commercials where the girls are eating one tiny little um, Giardelli chocolate square. And they look like they're having an orgasm over it. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? I I would laugh. Like, that doesn't even measure on my radar. No. Sorry, no. If you're that person, congratulations. So not me. Anyway, that's my story. And again, I'm just doing it for my own strength as I'm going through this about my nephew. I don't want to compromise my health over it because I have to be available. So like if you like, join us if you haven't. Let me know if you benefited from that at all. I'm going to share another article on that tomorrow. Keep praying for my nephew if you're a prayer person. Until we talk again, my friends, best of all, know that you're blessed.